everyone, this is Janet Hill at the Rock Island County Health Department. Thank you for joining us. It's 3.30 on October 20th. Uh, with us today are Anita Ludwig, the Administrator at the Rock Island County Health Department, and Edward, Edward Rivers, the Director of the Scott County Health Department. Anita, let's start off with some Rock Island County numbers, please. Good afternoon. Today in Rock Island County, we are reporting 49 new cases of COVID-19 in our county, and that brings our grand total to date of 3,837 cases. 33 people in Rock Island County are currently hospitalized with COVID-19, which is the highest number hospitalized in our county to date. The number of deaths remains at 97 at this time. In Scott County today, the number of cases is 4,047. As you heard me to say, this number is higher than Rock Island County's total, and this has been the case for many days. Earlier in the pandemic, stories were published asking why Rock Island County's numbers were so much higher than Scott County. And it's not a good thing that our fortunes have been reversed. We must take positive steps to slow the spread of coronavirus. As a matter of fact, the number of cases in Scott County for October so far is already higher than the total for any prior month. Also, the number of deaths stands at 35. The Iowa Department of Public Health reported three additional COVID-19 related deaths, bringing our total to 45. Two of the, excuse me, 35. Two of the individuals were elderly adults greater than 80 years of age. And the third was an older adult between the ages of 61 and 80. Our deepest sympathies go out to the family and friends of these members of our community. Nita, let's start off with some of your talking points, please. Sure. Our community is now 32 long weeks into the COVID-19 pandemic. Iowa is making national headlines with their surge in cases, but they are saying, this is not how we want our region or our community represented. At the start of, at the heart of being a Midwesterner and a Quad Cityan is the innate willingness to help others. Our community has shown this over and over and over again. The 2019 Mississippi flood showcased the best of our community with residents helping one another regardless of their personal beliefs by sandbagging and helping prevent the impending flood. During just the duration of this last summer, some neighbors coming out of the woodwork to help each other, tearing down trees, offering food or drink, or they're just there to support one another, often people that didn't even know each other, all to help their fellow neighbors. However, this same willingness to protect our fellow man is faltering during this pandemic. Wearing a mask costs nothing but it pays dividends in preventing the spread of the disease. Not hosting or attending gatherings of people is simple, and it will save lives. In public health, we are mystified by the willingness or the same willingness isn't there to support and protect others by these simple things that isn't, doesn't seem to be automatic and universal. Some residents in our community are finding ways to gather safely. Some are truly taking what we know about preventing the spread of this virus and putting it in its practices as they learn to live with COVID-19. However, this is not universal in our community. We know two truths, and these are not democratic or Republican truths. They are scientific and public health truths. The first is that if we don't universally wear masks and social distance, this pandemic will drag on for an extended amount of time. And secondly, if we universally wear masks and social distance, we can get a handle on this pandemic and begin the process of recovery. Thank you. We're asked frequently, why is our community experiencing such a surge? Simple answer is that not enough of our community are doing proven things that would slow the spread. Masking, distancing, quarantining and isolating when appropriate. And as we become more lax at doing these proven things, 
our cases begin to rise quickly. However, the cause is more complicated than a simple answer can define. Regardless, we've gotten ourselves in this far and it will take work and our working together to end it. First, we must agree as a community that health and safety must be the only thing that matters when we're talking about ending this pandemic. Politics and personal opinions do not matter. Masks are not political. Masks are science. Masks protect. Second, we must all decide when is enough enough? Many of our community haven't changed course as our children have been forced not to be in school the majority of the days in a week and are missing social interactions and other important moments to help their development. And we've seen outbreaks in our long-term care facilities and have watched the elderly in our community suffer from loneliness and missing their beloved visitors. And we've experienced 10 deaths in the QC in one week. And businesses have closed and layoffs have impacted our workforce and family. And the pleading of experts in our community has been ignored. When is enough enough? If you haven't been masking and social distancing up until now, please do. There's no shame in changing course and choosing today to begin to do your part to protect others. We know you can't lock yourself up for the next year, so choose lower risk activities to participate and implement the precautions that we have available. We can do this, we must do this, and we must do it now. Thank you, Ed and Nita. I'm going to the question section now. So if any of the media partners on the call have some questions for us, please type it into the chat. Um, I see one question that may have already been answered. I'll just read it out loud. Um, Davenport recently issued some masking guidelines in public buildings, which we saw released yesterday by the city of Davenport. And are there any other actions you would like to see done? I know Nita addressed some of that. Ed, do you have anything else you would like to add to that other actions that should take place? The things that people need to be doing or, or what was in our statements, uh, masking has been proven to work. Research shows that when both persons in a personal interaction are masked, the possibility or the, the chance of being infected drastically declines. Social distancing helps. And don't go out to places where there are a lot of people congregating where you can't maintain that six foot distance and people aren't wearing masks. You're just asking for trouble. Nina, also in the next question to you, it says, I've heard things about some gatherings where people wear masks but don't social distance. Have you heard similar stories, perhaps from your contact tracers or just in some of your other work? We have heard some stories and masks alone aren't the answer to everything, but they will help slow the spread in conjunction with social distancing is really the best way to uh, limit the spread of the virus, especially when people are indoors. And we're all gonna be indoors more and more as the weather gets worse. And one thing I guess I would just add that we have been saying all along, but it bears repeating, is stay home if you're sick. One of the things we have heard um, in our contact tracing is that people know they're sick and they still go out, they still go to the grocery store or uh, take out restaurant or what have you. So really the best thing is to stay home if you're sick. Thank you. Um, there's another question that came across. Uh, what worries you the most with all the, with the all time high of hospitalizations in Rock Island County? And do we expect that number to keep rising? Well, I think that is definitely concerning to us. And we certainly want that number to go down. And we know that if people will take these proper precautions, we can flatten that curve back out. Uh, we don't want to find out what, what comes next if it keeps going up and up. So that, that can't be good news, right? So uh, we just want everyone to be safe and vigilant and stay healthy. Another question, um, are there more COVID-19 patients in Rock Island County hospitals than only our county's residents? And do you know what that number is? 
I do not have data on any other residents. The only information I get from the hospitals each day are the number of Rock Island County residents that are currently hospitalized. Okay. Looks like there's no additional questions listed at this time. Please know that this is being recorded. It will be posted on the Scott County Health Department's website, and a press release will be sent out shortly for all of you, and we will be sharing this as well on social media, so feel free to um, check for additional information that you might have missed at that point. And we do look forward to sharing with you some more information yet later this week. So thank you for joining us, and have a good afternoon.